Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of No DQ and A video right here on youtube.com slash no DQ CAW. And as always, no DQ.com, your source for the very latest in WWE and TNA. We are now one week away from Hell in a Cell on pay per view. Got a lot of questions here regarding Hell in the Cell and got a lot of other questions as well, so let's get right down to it. Hey Aaron, with Dolph Ziggler showing signs of cashing in Money in the Bank, do you think it will happen at Hell in the Cell? I think it's a great idea for him to cash it in at the Cell pay-per-view. If not, where else would he cash it in? You're right. This past Friday night on SmackDown, Dolph Ziggler hinted that he would cash in Money in the Bank at Hell in the Cell after the Big Show versus Sheamus match. The thing is, Ziggler has been teasing it for months now. Almost every pay-per-view he's been talking about how he's going to cash in Money in the Bank. And um, there's been several times where he's come out and uh, his plans end up falling through. I think that um, when the time comes that he will actually cash it in, I, I would think it would be a surprise. So I'm not so sure it's going to happen at Hell in the Cell now since WWE made it so obvious that he's going to cash it in. I think it's just a way to... Um, to build up excitement for the pay-per-view with the idea that he might cash it in. But when I think it happens, it'll be a surprise. Now, um, you have Survivor Series coming up. You have TLC where Money in the Bank has been cashed in uh, previous years, like last year with Daniel Bryan. And um, you have Royal Rumble. So there's still opportunities for Ziggler to cash it in. And I think when it happens, it's something you're not you're not going to expect. I think that um, that's what WWE will want to do, but you never know. Maybe they will do it Hell in the Cell. Who knows? This is from Flat Xbox 17 Hey Aaron, please answer in a video. Do you think that with that tremendous promo from SEMA, did I just call him SEMA? I meant John Cena, putting over Ryback, that internet fans no longer have the right to call Cena a spotlight hogger? And I also got another question here. Um, do you think that John Cena is passing the torch to Ryback with his promo on Raw? The thing about John Cena's promo on Raw was that it was one of two scripts. If John Cena's uh, elbow was uh, in better shape and he was able to perform um, at Hell in a Cell, I think that um, that promo would have never happened. Um, obviously, uh, WWE realized that he's not at 100% and they don't want to risk him getting hurt further, especially with WrestleMania coming up soon, so they'd rather play it safe and keep him off the pay-per-view. Um, so this was just something that was uh, done done uh, by chance here. John Cena coming out and cutting a promo on Ryback. Uh, so I, I wouldn't call it a passing of the torch, just uh, it was merely a way to um, put over Ryback uh, as a top contender for CM Punk. And... Um, I mean, John Cena did a tremendous job. I thought that he really did a good job putting over Ryback, but uh, logic-wise, uh, from a storyline perspective, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense because for weeks and weeks, John Cena was uh, campaigning to get his rematch with CM Punk, and now all of a sudden he's saying, oh, let's just have Ryback face CM Punk instead. So I, I, I thought in that regard um, they could have done it a little bit better, but um, as I mentioned before, they, they, they really... Uh, had no other choice. They were backed into a corner here, and uh, they just had to go with Ryback and uh, have Cena be the guy that puts him over and uh, makes Ryback credible as, as a potential main eventer. This is from Enigma for Life. Hey Aaron, love the show. What do you think about DDP's rise to the top in WCW? Also, do you think he was misused in WWE? Please answer in video. Thanks. Uh, DDP's rise to the top was very interesting because, first of all, um, he was already into his mid to late 30s when he started getting a push, and that right there is rare. I think uh, part of DDP's rise had a lot to do with the fact that he was close friends with Eric Bischoff in real life. So that 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 gave him a boost, no doubt about it. But I will say that, that DDP, uh, he, he really uh, rised up to the occasion when, when he needed to. And he, he, uh, he I think he made himself a star. He went out there every night and... Um, he just worked hard and, you know, he, he got the gimmick over with the diamond cutter and, and uh, the self-high five. I mean, DDP really uh, did a lot to, to create his own character. And he was one of the few um, homegrown talents for WCW. You, you, look at a, you look at the WCW roster and there was only a handful of guys. Him, the Giant, uh, Goldberg, Sting, 
there was only a few guys that were actually WCW uh, superstars that were homegrown that weren't created from WWE. Um, so that, that that's something remarkable right there. And um, as far as his run in WWE goes, uh, uh, definitely could have been a lot better. The whole um, the whole stalker thing never made sense to begin with. If if you know the behind the scenes situation, he's married to Kimberly Page. Why would he stalk the Undertaker's wife? But I mean, it, the reveal was really cool. I have to say, when he came out and pulled off the mask, and it was a huge shock. It was a great moment in Raw history. Um, but yeah, after that, it went downhill. I mean, starting with King of the Ring, um, he got in a brawl with Undertaker. Undertaker got the better of him. And then uh, at SummerSlam, Undertaker and Kane just destroyed DDP and Canyon. And then the next night on Raw, uh, DDP loses to The Undertaker's wife. And this is during a period when uh, you have the invasion storyline and you're trying to get WCW and ECW over. So what do you do? You have uh, DDP lose to The Undertaker's wife. You got me. Hey Aaron, I noticed during Ryback's match on Raw this week that instead of Goldberg chants, there were Feed Me More chants. Do you think that this is a sign the audience are embracing Ryback as a serious competitor and not just a Goldberg ripoff? Um, I've mentioned this before about uh, Goldberg. Um, most cities that WWE goes to, they're not going to be um, your hardcore um, WWE fans from years back. Uh, the Goldberg chants... Um, it's a vocal minority, and usually when you hear the chants, it's in a uh, major WWE city on a major pay-per-view, like Extreme Rules. I mean, that was uh, a pay-per-view. It was in Chicago, which is uh, very uh, hardcore WWE um, fans there, and um, they were loud. There was a vocal minority. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely the Feed Me More chants are growing week by week, and... Um, I, I think that uh, Ryback will continue to build momentum here. Um, you know, people are getting into him and, and not just seeing him as a Goldberg ripoff. Rip even the people that know the Goldberg character, I mean, even even they are starting to get into the Ryback. So I, I do see a shift, but I'm sure, you know, if WWE's in uh, New York City or Toronto or something, you know, there's always going to be those smart marks in the crowd that are going to want to chant Goldberg. It, it's always going to happen to some degree, but... Uh, over time, I don't think it will, it will happen quite as much. This is from Matty Don. Was CM Punk versus Chris Jericho the best match at WrestleMania 28? In my opinion, it was definitely better than the Hell in a Cell, but I think The Rock and Cena was also pretty good. Your thoughts? From a technical standpoint, um, I remember CM Punk versus Chris Jericho being really good, but uh, to be honest, it was a little bit forgettable. I, I don't remember a whole lot from that match. There's nothing that sticks out in my memory that much. Um, I do remember the crowd just not being into it. You know, you had Hell in the Cell. That really, uh, to a lot of fans, was one of the main events. That and Rock vs. Cena. So the crowd um, unleashed all their energy on those two matches. And I think for Punk and Jericho, uh, it was just a match that was uh, stuck in a bad spot. It was between a rock and a hard place. Um, it really didn't have the chance uh, to, to be a main event caliber match just because the crowd wasn't going to be into it like they were going to be into Hell in a Cell and Rock vs. Cena. I, I do think that um, their, their rematch at Extreme Rules was a lot better because it was in Chicago, it was CM Punk's hometown. Um, so I, I would say that that was the better match. The best match at WrestleMania, um, it, it's a toss-up. I mean, the two main events of the matches that people remember, Hell in a Cell... Um, uh, I would probably say uh, Hell in the Cell just because of the storyline and the quality of the match put together. I mean, Rock versus Cena had a ton of heat and was great for what it was, but um, I don't know if it was quite as legendary. I mean, neither match I thought was quite as legendary as uh, other WrestleMania matches. Like, I don't think Rock versus Cena was as big as Hogan versus Rock, and I don't think um, Hell in the Cell was as big as uh, the Shawn Michaels matches with Undertaker. So, I mean... Very good matches, but there was nothing that really blew me away as all-time classics. Hey, Aaron, what did you think of the Raw vs. SmackDown feud between Eric Bischoff and Stephanie McMahon? Love the show. Oh, I thought it was really good. I thought that um, it, it was uh, a good way to kick off the brand extension. I think that um, Eric Bischoff did a tremendous job. I mean, one thing that really stands out to me um, was the whole Billy and Chuck wedding 
when Eric Bischoff was uh, dressed up as the priest. I thought that was just great television, and, and Eric Bischoff uh, did one of his best performances in that segment. Um, and then uh, when Eric Bischoff, uh, I think he kissed Stephanie at one point. Um, Eric Bischoff did a tremendous job during that period, and um, I, I really attribute the success of that feud to Eric Bischoff. I just thought he was uh, at the top of his game. All right, that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and A video. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding Hell in the Cell. Uh, stay tuned to the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. This week, I'm going to be posting uh, my top 25 matches of all time in WWE. Another list, I'm sure, will uh, get some praise and some controversy behind it. But um, stay tuned for that, and I'll see you this coming week for more No DQ and A video.